ready. There's no vote actually started. I had watched a documentary, The World According to Dick Cheney, and I had written one of the songs called Prophets of War on there. And through watching documentaries, and I, I watch 60 Minutes every week, and I read a lot of news, and, and I just uh, it just came to me that you know we're headed down this path of just just greed and corruption, and, and it just seems that um, we don't want to help the people that can't help themselves. But when you pay attention, it's a very dark world right now. I'm an atheist, so I don't believe in the devil, I don't believe in, 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 in God, I don't believe in heaven, as a, I don't believe we go anywhere when we're done. I think this is your one shot to do the best you can, and if you really want to be somebody special, then you better do something that's special that people can talk about when you're no longer here. No one's surviving revenge for all that we have done. band are, you know, uh, a bunch of guys, we, we all went to high school together. We actually met each other during those high school years. We had all been in different bands at the time. And I, you know, I look a certain way, uh, the scars and, and, and bald and the tattoos. And I've been getting tattooed since I was, you know, 16, 17 years old. I was, uh, I saw a picture of a Yakuza, uh, Japanese, in their gang system in the 60s and 70s. They would get tattooed heavily. And I, I saw that and that's what I wanted. I was like, that's what I want to look like one day. Generation Kill is a band, you know, like I said, we're, we've been high school friends for uh, a long time. One of the good things about the band is that we can do whatever we want. We're not, we've been labeled a thrash band, but we're not. We're really just a metal band or a hard rock band. The only reason I don't have long hair is because I went bald and I look stupid with a big bald spot. I mean, we all wanted to be long hair, but, you know, each and every one of us uh, have lost our hair. So that's the reason we're not long haired metalhead guys anymore. Well, I was living in New York. Um, and I was playing in a band, like a reggae punk rock band, sort of like Sublime. And um, we had fallen out, so they, they you know, I, they fired me or I quit or however you want to, however you, you want to see. <laughs> I, they fired me. Um, and, uh, you know, me and my, uh, I was dating this, this pillhead chick and I, so I, you know what, I gave, I gave away everything I owned except my motorcycle and my, and my PlayStation 2 and I, I had my leather gear on and I packed a bag of underwear and socks and this is pre-cell phone, pre, no, I had no, I just had cash and that was it. Yeah man, it's, I did uh, almost 800 miles today. I'm, uh, I'm fucking shot. I left New York and I didn't have a real plan. You know, me and my family had had a falling out for a while. I stopped at my mother's house and I said I was sorry. She said she was sorry and we laid all those demons to rest. And basically what I had done over the next nine months is I had actually called every human being I could ever think of in my life and I made amends to them. And I really just kind of tried to repair my soul because I felt kind of broken at the time. When I was 35 years old, I was uh, sober for about 10 years and I was kind of at this crux of my life and I didn't really, you know, I was at this point point. I didn't really know what I was doing. I'm so fucking grateful for all the, everything man, the good, the bad. I've never learned from anyone else's mistakes, I have to, I have to make them myself. I ended up in Los Angeles, I got a couple jobs, I was loading in gear at the El Rey and at, at the Key Club, I was working at, uh, you know, Avalon and I was bartending at the Dragonfly and I was, hang out with, with people who were sober and I was trying to just begin a life. And I found myself, I found myself really at a, at a point where I was felt like I didn't owe the world anything. I was clean with the world, I was clean with everyone I knew. And then I got this opportunity to go on tour with Exodus and uh, as a roadie, as a guitar tech, and I took it and uh, we got along. They called me up a month later and said, hey man, do you want to audition to be the singer? Uh, and I was like, yeah. And that was it, I got the gig and, and, and I became the singer of Exodus. And here I am, 10 years later, five albums and over 100 countries. It's like been an amazing experience in the last you know, 20 years of, of what my life has transpired from. I'll never forget being on my motorcycle. And I, I did about 15,000 miles on that trip from New York to LA. I just kind of crisscrossed and did all back roads. And I remember being on the Blue Ridge Parkway outside um, uh, in West Virginia and it was a beautiful, 80 degree day and I'm in my full leathers and 
laying, I was sitting on the side of the road, I, I'd stopped and I'd smoked at cigarettes at the time and I was having a cigarette on the side of the road and a hawk had, had, it was just circling around me. And I just felt at peace, man, I did, I felt at peace and I, uh, you know, that was one of those moments that I said, oh, like, you know, this is, this is pretty cool what I'm doing. My love of Gibson has been, uh, I'm a guitar player and I write some of the music for Generation Kill and I, I play at home and I have one custom made Gibson. They are the, the premier guitar of the world. I mean, if I had one guitar, and you could only have one, Rob, I would take a Les Paul. They feel like, like a guitar is supposed to feel. You know, that's why I love Gibson.